Tyler Wade was just at the podium and he had mentioned that he thought Miguel and Duhar made really significant strides at third base. Did you see that as well? What have you seen from him at third? Yeah, um, obviously, Miggy, we all know his uh, work ethic. You know, this is a kid that is going to come to the ballpark and put all, all, all the work. And obviously, you know, this time that we were in Tampa, we use it as an opportunity for uh, for Miggy to work not only at third base, but in multiple positions. But obviously, his footwork is uh, a lot better. Uh, the throwing, obviously, coming from a, from an injury uh, last year is uh, so much better as well. Uh, so, you know, it's about getting uh, live reps now and just continue with the work, you know, making sure he's confident and staying aggressive at third base. It seems like he has not sulked at all. Uh, Gio Rochelle obviously had a great year last year, but they told and do hard to try the outfield, maybe do a little third base, first base. What does it say about him that he's kind of grabbed the bull by the horns there and hasn't said anything about it? Yeah, and you know, that says a lot about, you know, what type of person and what type of player Miggy is. He's, uh, you know, he goes all the way back to uh, January when we first saw him in the Dominican Republic, you know. Uh, he was basically the one that brought it up. You know, it was to, to, to the manager, Aaron Boone, and, and you know, and myself. That he was open to it and it was it was easy for us and then once we uh we got to spring training obviously he showed up early in february to tampa and, and and wanted to work so that's uh that's huge when you when when you have that player uh asking and wanted wanting to do that extra work and, and try multiple and new positions in this case for me especially in the outfield so um we're happy where, where he's at right now and you know we we, we like to see uh more game rest uh, out of him Luke Voigt mentioned the other day that he dropped about 10 pounds during quarantine. Have you noticed the effects of that at all defensively? Has there been any change because of, he's a little slighter? Yeah, obviously, uh, when I first saw him, you know, when we reported here last week, he, you know, you could see it right away. And then now the past few days, watching him move around first base, he's, uh, obviously he's lighter. He's, he's, he's moving a lot better. Uh, he's working on his range, obviously moving side to side. And, you know, something that he's, uh, he's working really hard at it. So, yeah, definitely we're seeing the, the results on the field and hopefully translating to the games. Thank you. Take the next question from Dave Lennon. Dave, go ahead and unmute. Hey, Carlos. Um, just, just with DJ, you know, still dealing with some health things, um, how important has it been maybe to get more reps with Tyler Wade, with uh, Glaber? just to kind of get maybe used to together for that scenario. And also, you know, it's kind of a different dynamic this year. You know, Glaber's a shortstop, but now he's back there full time this year. How important does it become kind of getting that famer familiarity and getting those reps together in a short period of time? Yeah, um, obviously, you know, um, missing DJ, you know, uh, it's, uh, it's a big part of our lineup, but uh, with Tyler Wade, obviously, uh, getting reps is, is something that we've been working uh, since we got shut down. He was one of the players that was in Tampa, and that was important. Him and Glaber were, were working together as well as DJ. So, uh, and again, the, uh, these two kids have played together in the minor leagues as well. And I think that transition is uh, it's, it's not, it's not going to be as hard. Uh, they're used to each other playing up the middle. And, uh, you know, we're, we're happy with where they're at right now. Obviously, we've got to make sure that with Tyler Wade get some reps at shortstop as well. Um, and, you know, we got, you know, we got, we got guys that are getting reps at second base too, you know, Tyro Strada and, and a couple of the other guys. So, you know, um, again, I think it's important that they work together, but uh, we're not too concerned with it because, like I said, they, they, they play together before up the middle. Hey, Carlos, just going back to the spring for a second, with Glaber, it seemed like when he moved back to short, I don't know if there was a little readjustment going on there or stuff, but I remember he, at, at times – you know, there were a couple of defensive lapses that we, we wouldn't have expected necessarily. Do you think that was just part of his, re, his readjustment there? Yeah, you know, we didn't want to put too much into it. Obviously, you know, he made a few errors. We saw it, but we didn't want to make too much out of it. Obviously, we were happy with the work he was putting in, pre-game work, and uh, with the way he was going about it. The biggest thing was just staying aggressive and staying positive with him. You know, we didn't want to, like I say, create too much out of it. And, you know, uh, what we've seen so far in – when we when we got shut down as well, you know, he's been putting in the work and, you know, we, we're happy and confident that uh, he's, he's going to be fine. Thanks, Carlos. Next question from Sweeney Murdy. Sweeney, go ahead and unmute. Carlos, good to see you. Good and to see you, Sweeney. Your role as bench coach now, what are some of the things that you've dived into, especially considering the extra innings rule? 
you know, Aaron Boone has talked about, you know, trying to find different ways and kind of trying to do the different computations as to what works, what works better. What are some of the things about the extra innings that maybe you've noticed or have thought about? Yeah, obviously we started those conversations uh, once we know that that rule was going to be put in play and, you know, talking to the coaching staff as well and, and, and the manager just to how we were going to attack offensively and defensively. And as you guys could see, obviously we got guys bonding, uh, going through bonding sessions now. And defensively, we started working about uh, with some uh, bump plays as a team. We had a, a, we had a lot of relievers yesterday with the infielders working on, on bump plays. And this is something that, you know, we have to be prepared. We have to be ready. And, 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 and we're doing that right now. Take the next question from James Wagner. James, go ahead. Hola, Carlos. Uh, how's it going? I uh, hope you're well. Uh, just you good. Just uh, just curious. Before you know this, um, you know, summer workout, spring training started. What what went into like planning for all this? Given all the things you're not used to, um, you know, spacing everyone out. Uh, did you have to read the manual page by page to figure out? And then, what do your days look like now as it as it runs? Like you hear at yeah, nine in the morning. Uh, Everything happened so fast. We were preparing to obviously hold spring training in Tampa. And then when we found out that, that we were moving here, everything happened really, really fast. Again, going through all the protocols and getting together with, with the coaching staff, our manager, our front office, just to put together, you know, the plan and the schedule is uh, day by day. Um, it, it, it's been challenging, obviously, uh, following the protocols, uh, guidelines, making sure everybody's uh, safe and, and everybody's, you know, following all those guidelines, like I say, it's, uh, it's a little bit of ch uh, challenge making that schedule every day because obviously the report times, you know, we're, we're talking about seven to eight different report times, trying to space those guys out as much as we can. And, uh, but um, the help has been great from, uh, from the coaching staff and, and getting that feedback from the players as well. So a uh, little different, uh, we adjusted uh, real quick. But we're, we're happy with, uh, with the way, you know, we're, we're doing things here right now. And are you here like, what, nine in the morning? Is that when the first wave of players comes no, in or early afternoon? And then, like, how does I think, it work? So I, I think those days are over. We're, you know, we're really, really following, you know, the protocols and the report times are, you know, pretty strict, you know, and then we have to respect those times, you know, where this, you know, is, is the same report time for the staff and, you know, I'm, we're probably 10, 30, 11 o'clock when, you know, the people from, from uh, the CDT and the, the, the intake screening over there uh, is, is letting us in into the facility right now. So uh, I wish I could get here earlier, but, you know, uh, I'm not doing it. Take the next question from George King. George, go ahead. Carlos, how are you? Good, George. How are you doing? Good. You mentioned... Um, Miguel, uh, footwork being better. What, what is better, and what did you do to improve? Or what did you and he do to improve it? Yeah, um, back in 2018, in 2018, uh, his ready position was really, really low, and he was kind of on his heel. So we kind of put him on a better position now, more athletic, incorporating a, a small hop on that pre pitch when that ball is entering the, the hitting zone. So. That way, he's, he's, he's going to allow him to have a better first step on the ball and better better read, hopefully, off the bat. So just kind of put him, putting him in, in a better position uh, uh, to, to be able to react and get better reads uh, off the bat and hopefully translate on his footwork and, and fielding, you know, good hops. Thank you. Take another from Marley Rivera. Marley, go ahead. Um, can you hear me now? Yep. Okay, good. Thank you. Hola, Carlos, ¿cómo estás? Marley, ¿cómo estás? Bien, verte. gracias a Dios, igual, me da gusto verte. Um, Carlos, estabas hablando de que los días tienen un calendario bien específico. ¿Cuál es la parte más difícil de todos estos protocolos? Sí, mira, este, la parte más difícil yo creo que es asegurarse que los muchachos se reporten a la hora que tienen que reportarse. Estamos hablando de siete, ocho diferentes grupos que tenemos. Tenemos casi 60 peloteros en, 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 en el estadio en estos momentos y todos tenemos que seguir ese protocolo. Empieza desde, los, desde el cuerpo técnico, del cuerpo del staff, del, del, del cuerpo médico y pues cada hora es un grupo diferente. Entonces coordinar eso con el grupo de operaciones, a, asegurarnos la, el transporte de donde se están quedando hacia, hacia el estadio, sacar los peloteros a la hora que tienen que salir, pues es, es, ha sido un poco difícil, pero gracias a Dios he, he tenido la ayuda de, de todos los coaches y pues de, 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 de la oficina y de, de todas las personas que están aquí a nuestro alrededor, pues que han hecho el trabajo un poco más fácil. 
Y solo una pregunta más, estuviste hablando de que Gleyber tiene unas cuantas cosas que mejorar, obviamente vimos los errores que cometió en la primavera. ¿Qué tiene que hacer Gleyber para ser, verdad, el campo corto titular de los Yankees de Nueva York? Sí, mira, consistencia, consistencia, salir a jugar y pues que haga sus jugadas de rutina, que no pierda la agresividad, que se mantenga mentalmente positivo y yo creo que pues todos sabemos la, la clase de pelotero que Gleyber puede ser. Este, estamos muy contentos con la manera de que él está trabajando y, y bueno, esperamos que ese trabajo que se hace antes del juego pues se, 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 se vea en, en, en el juego, pues como, sea, como tal. Gracias. Thank you. Bueno. We'll take a final 